burnout is a common thing that happens in artist spaces. However, in YouTube's climate, it becomes difficult to overcome with the constant need to always post to stay relevant. Last I spoke with animator Meat Canyon, all was seemingly going well for his channel. However, over the course of a year, things started to change for better and worse. Though he is known as a popular parody maker, after speaking with him, it seems despite his success, it's something that he wants to move away from. Hello, I'm Daft Pina, and this is Meat Canyon, quitting parody. But what I won't quit is his transition to the next chapter. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, I like to have chapters for each section. Personally, I like the way it splits up. Okay, so I already made a video that goes into the deeper depths of the history of parody, who Meat Canyon is, and how a cartoon of his is made. So this will basically be an abridged version of that, plus a little new things here and there. Meat Canyon, also known as Hunter Hancock, was born in the state of Missouri and attended the Kansas City Art Institute. That being the same place some guy named Walter Disney went to, but who was he again? He's not the subject of the video. Graduating in 2016 with a bachelor's degree, Hunter did some freelance work before starting his YouTube channel. Despite being created in 2015, it wasn't until his Pinocchio parody in 2019 that he reached his first hit. I cannot wait any longer, Papa. I must become flesh and bone. Dear God, Pinocchio, what are you doing? Since then, his two most known animations were Jawbreaker and Wabbit Season, based on Ed and Eddie and Looney Tunes, respectively. But an interesting note about the latter animation is that it's not allowed on his channel anymore because the Warner Brothers copyrighted it for some reason. Which is interesting as Hunter depicted Bugs Bunny as a closeted rapist. And I guess since they legally own the video now, it's canon? Looking like a double wide surprise. God damn. Sure hope they're not making a fighting game with that character. Watch out, Batman. On average, his cartoons take about a week to produce, starting from writing on a Monday to releasing on a Sunday. Since my previous video released, he actually got married to his college best friend Allison, buying a house with her and getting a few pets. He's also partnered up with the Flash Kids animators, Tom and Dom, to which I met when visiting their studio back in November 2021. Well, only Don, as Tom was out hunting, so. No meeting of the minds there. However, I did meet Hunter's dogs Tugboat and Rowan, his cats Moonshine and Jack, as well as his many chickens and ducks. Right. You know, it's always nice to see a fellow creator's pets. Like the footage you see on screen right now of mine, Baron Marvel, the cat sibling duo. But little furry friends cannot stave off the next chapter of this video, one that was hinted at before. With him posting an average of two animations per month on a tight schedule, burnouts with him and his team was inevitable. To understand more about how and why this happened, I interviewed him to get some answers. Just like I have the answer to your wallet needs with Exter. They are the world's largest smart wallet brand with innovative design solutions to improve the way you carry your everyday items. Right here, I have the Parliament's wallet with RFID protection and quick card access. Pressing this button makes accessing all of your cards really easy. Also, it's pretty fun to play with. Made with premium leather, this is surely a luxury item that you want to be seen with. Pairing well with the wallet is their solar power tracker. With just two hours of sunlight, you get up to three months of a charge. And using the Chipolo app, you can find your card anywhere with precise location. But if your phone is lost, you can double click the tracker to ring your phone to find it anywhere. It's surprisingly thin, both the wallet and the tracker, and it doesn't take up much space in my pocket. If you go to their website right now, you can take advantage of their Black Friday sale, getting up to 40% off site-wide on their wonderful products. This wall makes a great gift for the holidays, so if you miss out on the first sale, there's a Cyber Week and Christmas sale right around the corner with up to 35% off and free gift bags. Go check out the link in the description and visit exter.com today to get the premium wallet that you deserve. Much like Meat Canyon deserves a break from his burnout. Nailed it. That transition from like the story to the ad back to the story. Amazing. Smooth. With his current production schedule, Hunter has said his burnout has been in the back of his mind since December of 2020. And he is no stranger of lamenting how he feels on Twitter with the post from March 13th, 2021, being honest with his audience. Holy f burnout. I've been grinding hard for a while and the creative block is super real. I usually tell myself, I'll take a week off and chill, but then fold and obsessively work on something out of fear of displeasing the algorithm. But I think it's time for that week off. 
Now you may be asking why I got someone else to voice that part, Steph Hunter, and there's a very good reason. Part of his burnout is caused by the content he makes, parodies. On his channel in the early years, he would have a mix of original skits and parodies, however the latter has taken over, apart from my first slumber party. Because YouTube pushed his parodies more than his original content, he gained an audience that is in more favor of those cartoons, causing Hunter to produce more of those videos to please his audience. He feels this type of content doesn't bring as much joy as creating something original as it delegitimizes what he creates. Feeling as if they have a cheap undertone in production, and wants to lead projects that garner more respect, and to have something he's truly proud of. I'm at this point where I do well on YouTube, people like my stuff, I like making what I like. I think that I'm just like insecure about what, like the level of degree that it is. Like I don't think that I've made anything that's like really that impactful in terms of like artistic expression. I feel like I want more respect in the, in the artist realm of things. He starts to feel as if his work is stifling, even if it brings his audience joy, as he personally doesn't feel creatively challenged. It is quite easy to take a pre-established character and make them do something that they normally wouldn't do. Ugh, Mario is doing drugs and says bad word? He wouldn't do that, would he? The thought of keeping relevance is a scary thought, especially to someone who makes a living on YouTube. The website doesn't favor animation in the slightest, as it would much rather you upload as much as you can. Creator Donkey touched upon this in his 2020 video, I'm done making good videos, which was an experiment where he would produce a lot more content in a shorter amount of time. While it did increase his viewership and earnings, it was at the cost of the quality of content and his sanity. And while Hunter is capable of making an animation in less than two weeks, that doesn't mean he can supplement every other video for an original work, as it might cause a divide in his audience viewership. So to maintain maximum retention, he's put in a difficult place, not entirely making what he wants. Burnout is a state of mind of being creatively tapped out and unwilling or unable to finish your project. However, in saying that parodies are an easier form of writing compared to original works, that doesn't mean you can't utilize them for his benefit. Secret Formula, released during December 2020, which seemingly was just a parody of SpongeBob, has a deeper meaning to it. It is a direct reference to having to give your all, the audience always wanting more, the expense of your health. Frankly, I don't think I could stop even if I wanted to. But who would want to stop when people love what you do this much? Back in February 2021, there was a winter storm that devastated the state of Texas, something Hunter and I went through in experiencing blackouts. This caused his cartoon, Peppa Pig, to be delayed, and while trying to survive a natural disaster, he also had to worry about being favored in the YouTube algorithm, something that is always a looming threat over everyone who posts. In tandem with his SpongeBob cartoon, his Space Jam 2 video focuses on the act of repeating the past, the audience wanting the same thing as before, mixing with their expectation to always have something brand new. Forever worrying about if his next video would do as good as the previous one, or if it will, be another classic. A more recent animation focuses on the content creator Nikocado Avocado, a mukbang YouTuber known for his over the top reactions and massive weight gain since he started YouTube. Hunter actually sees himself in the creator, noting that Nikocado is a victim of the algorithm, yet doesn't really want to escape it anytime soon. Being so absorbed with his character, he has essentially become a villain of YouTube, as many people would put it. This is akin to Hunter's animation, Breakfast on a Wednesday, which deals with his personal troubles of weight gain, and always putting it off to tomorrow. So to see someone like Nikocado revel in his unhealthy behavior, as well as staying in character for the algorithm, he saw part of himself in the content. The Nikocado cartoon being an allusion to King Midas, a Greek tale of a king where everything he touched turned to gold. In the video depicting everything Nikocado touches turning into sludge, eventually touching his arm, and eating himself to death. Quite a literal metaphor, to say the least. To be popularly known for something is a blessing and a curse, especially for Hunter. He is no stranger to criticism and hate comments, or those claiming he's a one-trick pony because he makes parody animations. I make these things, people come in real quick, they don't really give a f about like what you're trying to say or who you are as a person. They just wanna consume shit and then leave. 
So in late 2020, he sought to create something new, a Kickstarter for an original series. I mean, I'm very happy. I'm content, which is also another reason why I want to move out of parodies, though, too. And I want to put myself in another situation where I feel not as comfortable to where I can grow and learn and uh, make some stuff that maybe I'm just like really, really, really proud of would be awesome. Hunter's thoughts of writing a series can be traced back publicly to March 5th, 2020, where Hunter was contemplating with very short episodes of a Western series, as he's always been a fan of spaghetti westerns. Over the course of a year, he switched gears and went for a horror-based cartoon called Monster Lab. Dear God, help us fund this project! Don't you want to see me make some monsters and shit? And as you can see from my set, I'm pretty much a fan of horror as well. See? This little skeleton? He's rainbow? Some people are afraid of those. But no matter the premise, the Kickstarter was something different and frightening, however necessary, for him to do. Is there other choice of raising the money on your own, or go to the pitching routes to networks? However, the latter is a way longer process. Not only are you pitching to a group of people, what you call your story will change one way or another. And even if it does get made, the possibility of it never airing is ever present, such as the case of Close Enough. Originally to release in 2017 from regular show creator JG Quintel, it was pushed back to 2020, partially due to a network merger. You know, it was just... happen all the time. Yep, even if the show does get aired, the odds of you owning your IP when working with a network are so astronomically small that there are only like two creators at the top of my head that still own their IPs. There's Brendan Blabber of Epithet Erased and Steve Purcell of Sam and Max. The first getting a first season, with Brendan opting to make a book to continue the series, and the latter choosing to license out to companies rather than them just buying his work outright. You know what, there's actually a good Family Guy episode that touches on this, which focuses on Brian Griffin pitching a serious drama, only for it to end up like a Big Bang Theory-esque comedy with Monkey, a story as old as time in Hollywood. And if you're liking this story, I mean video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And check out my merch. With many Kickstarters never getting completed, he understood his limitations wanting to ask and over-deliver on his goals. Asking for 100,000 USD, the original plan was to make eight, six to eight minute episodes for a full season, Monster Lab. This is certainly no small task, and when the funding page first came out, Hunter was scared that it wouldn't get funded. When we were getting ready to start the Kickstarter, I was concerned that there wasn't gonna be, you know, I was like, oh, you know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll get funded, I'm not sure. It was one of those things where, of course, like every moment leading up to that felt like some huge calculated plan to make sure that like, people felt engaged and interested. And of course, you know, self-confidence is a huge strong suit of mine. So I was just like, who's even gonna, who would wanna sign up for this? I don't know. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think that it was gonna get funded initially. Though he has made original IPs in the past, such as 1880, Jamal and Rachel, and even Day Drinking, he was unsure if his audience would even want to see a full season of his original works. Thus, having this Kickstarter was a make or break for his creative career, as the risk was massive if he failed, knowing that his audience only won parodies and nothing original from Hunter. Yet, in less than a month, he was able to reach 150 USD in funds, and was able to expand into 11 minute plus episodes, which he says was a miracle for writing. The process of creating a parody starts at advantage because you know who the characters are. So having the preconceived notion of their personality is out of the way when you see them. But for writing an original series, to get someone to care about someone they've never seen before is quite a tough task. This was much of a challenge for Hunter originally, as having such little time with the characters, six to eight minutes, the original drafts didn't feel like the characters had much depth. And initially we were like six to eight minutes, that's like a long time. But when we were like looking at these like six page scripts, you're like, I, I, we need more. Like I'm trying to, you know, cram all this stuff in. And then it was kind of becoming, it was a blessing in a way to have more time because I think it would have turned into something that's more like slapstick, really quick, really quick humor. That's like kind of silly. And I wanted to like not treat it super seriously at all, but I wanted to, I just wanted to write some good dialogue with characters and have like more interaction and emotional tie-ins. You know, Uno, just by helping someone, I felt happier than I have in a long time. I said we use this $400 to clean up this house and start helping more people. Part of the late 2020 burnouts comes from not only making about two parodies a month, but also constantly being in production, a monster lab. 
On the Kickstarter, he sought to tell his audience when the episodes release, and since he first started, has made every deadline, with some hiccups along the way. While having a set date out there is a daunting task with the timer ever ticking down, I would much prefer that than to never know when the next episode is. Is it going to be tomorrow, next month, yesterday? With all the stress, that isn't to say he isn't grateful for this opportunity, as many people are not able to fully fund an original IP, especially one he's had in the works for quite a while. Back in 2018, when he was living in New York, Hunter was animating on Liver Spots and Astronauts, a Facebook Watch original series. And if that's like the first time you're hearing about this, this is the first time I'm hearing about that platform too. In his free time during production, he would make short 60 second clips of Katsununo, the main character's monster lab, and felt that he was always destined to make a horror based series. Though if burnouts wasn't the only thing to bring him down, releasing a show alongside a more popular one can bring some strong emotions. Hellbo Boss is a series created by YouTube animator Vivian Medrano, which focuses on a demon assassination team from hell. And though vastly different in scope and genre, comparisons to the series have been had in the comments section and even by Hunter himself. Fuck, what a, what a crazy timing. If you ever want to feel really bad about yourself, <laughs> release a series right at the same time as another, and you're like kind of on a big YouTube channel, release it at the same time as another person making a series that is like so wildly beloved. To see their series get 35 million views in the first episode, while his getting nearly 4 million did break his heart a little bit, feeling as if he could not compete against them. But that right there lies an issue. There shouldn't be any competition when it comes to online animation, and you should understand that these negative thoughts will always creep up. Comparisons from the fan bases are natural, as when I say the phrase full season of an independent online cartoon, not many shows come to mind? I mean, there are concepts like Farfetch'd, Lack of Daisy, and Alpha Betas, but those aren't really full seasons. Well, the latter had a Kickstarter which raised over a million dollars for only 33 minutes of animation? You know, looking back at the 150,000 USD that Hunter raised for like 90 minutes of animation, seems like a bargain. I think it's like you get into this competitive mindset where you're like, you need to have the best or like the most popular thing. That's not the case at all. And it's hard to justify that with like, you know, YouTube's analytics and how they judge things and how you are, you compare your other videos. So it, it, it was definitely hard to, com to compare myself to a lot of things. But at the end of the day, this year has taught me, especially that, I don't know, man, people are going to like your stuff. People aren't going to like your stuff. You just got to make shit for yourself and be make a product that you're happy with. When he released his first episode, he read the negative comments and had self-doubt with his funded cartoon series, wondering if he should stick to parodies. But negative comments are to be expected, especially when you cultivate an audience from parodies. It is a lot easier to make fun of something rather than create yourself, and as Hunter relays, it's been a humbling experience to make something entirely new. It is incredibly hard for somebody to care about a character that they've never met before. It's very, very, very difficult to write a character that's never been existed before. Parodies are very fun because you, the, the establishment of knowing this character and knowing who this context of this thing is is already out of the way, so you can kind of do whatever you want and put people into whatever ride because they are already either emotionally connected or they have a, you know, a, a thought of a person or a character. But for making a series, I have grown so much more respect for people who make original content or original series that have a huge or just a loving fan base that have people that care about it because it's just so difficult. Which is why alongside his parodies in Monster Lab, Hunter wanted to try out live action content. Burnouts can be caused by many factors such as a stressful work environment, tight deadlines, or even getting stuck in a rut of creating the same thing. Much like how I'm stuck in a Meat Canyon cartoon. I'm stuck in a Meat Canyon cartoon? When focusing on a specific type of content, you start to wonder if that's all you're known for, or can be known for. Oftentimes an audience will see animation channels as a collective, or just inhuman, because of the lack of an on-screen presence. Such as Dorkly, a channel known for its parody video game animations. No one says this specific animator has a bad style at Dorkly. Rather, Dorkly has bad animation. And what if Mario did a bad word? Oh, no. 
a lot. So in early 2021, opting to show more of himself on his second channel, Papa Me tames to be more personality driven. Well, second channel is a loose term as it's not a dumping ground for behind the scenes or extra content, rather its own thing entirely. Be it animating more experimental skit animations or his drawing commentary videos, he feels more able to express things he cannot on his main channel. It mostly started because I was like, man, I really can't do this workflow with animation that I've been doing for two years now. Like, it's, it's totally waning on, like, my mental health. Like, physically, I've, like, just gone downhill uh, with health as well and stuff. And it's all, a lot of it is due to just attributing to the amount of work and stress that goes into maintaining that upload schedule especially with fucking cartoons it's like very 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 hard and so i was like i want to grow my personality more i want to feel like i can make videos that are a little more simple and fun and goofy and still get like a public reception and as it turned out people do like hunter for not only his parody animations but even just as himself with his second channel garnering its own cult of personality of a fan base and even when a parody does get released it doesn't have to be on the same grand scale, and could just be as simple as animating a badly written fanfic, Zootopia. Uh, you, Snake, you are certainly a hot bad boy. And as it turned out, after releasing the Nikocado Avocado animation, the creator actually responded in a fun over the top way. I'm angry, I'm angry. Look, Bert, my feet don't even touch the ground. I am six foot one. What? You're not six foot, are you six foot one? Are we the same height? Utilizing these face cam videos, Hunter was able to go more in depth on his thoughts, rather than relying on a pinned comment or even a Twitter post. To be able to allow yourself to be more personal to your audience lets them care more about what you're going through, as making the Kickstarter and asking for a lot of money might bring a disconnect to the audience even with updates, thus making it harder to see the other person on the side of the pin as well. A person doing these more loose videos can release some anonymity of a content creator. I do feel bad for him because I do think that he is genuinely a good creator. Like I think that he sticks to the bit really fucking well, but it is unfortunate that you have to do that if he feels the need that he has to do this kind of content um, to keep that kind of relevancy or to keep that kind of um, monetization. This also has prevalence within his new podcast with Flash Gets His Tom and Dom, originally DMing him because of Wabbit Season how much they liked it. They invited him on their exclusive Patreon podcast as a guest only, yet after that, they liked the chemistry so much, they made their own series called The Cream Crew. But that business venture has had some drawbacks as the both creators' main channels focusing on animation, finding the time to record when not animating proved to be an issue. Though the editing is done by an outside party, Justin Greger, the act of getting Hunter, Tom, and Don together on the same schedule was imperative. And so along comes hiring a longtime friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, Trevor, entering the podcast. But not as like a member, more like a social media manager, producer even. Mainly to make sure that the group can be wrangled together. Hunter! No, honestly, get the fuck out. The rent is due. Get the fuck out. I'll pay it. You I'm owe right. $30,000. I'll pay when I'm right. This video in of itself took a lot of planning to get our schedules aligned. And I'm glad to have finally been able to meet the gang in real life. Except Tom. He wasn't there. With Trevor's help, the Cream Crew was able to have their first outing as a podcast with Pickle Rick Goes to the Ren Fair, a story of the three trying not to break character at a local medieval festival. This being the first of many RL hangouts on the channel, ones I look forward to watching when they release. And at first, as Hunter's expansion in content may have added onto his workload, however in saying that, creating this more original content has given him a better peace of mind. To be known for more than a parody guy is a rut that was hard to get out of, and important since he sought to expand his business. The idea of quoting parody in its entirety may not be a reality as of yet, however with each new venture, be it this podcast, his second channel, or even Monster Lab Season 1, it improves the possibility in the future. Hunter aims to one day have his main channel release a video once in a while as an event, so more time and care can be put into his works. While parody can be made in a week, to have more time on average could let the animation team, well, breathe. And with that extra time in writing, they can make something just as memorable and impactful as the Wabbit seasons and jawbreakers that came before on his channel. And learning a lot from working on Monster Lab, his first full original production, not only does he have a greater appreciation for those cartoons, but he's also thought more about how he can utilize parodies as more than just a character says a bad word to find deeper meaning within the cartoons, such as with Spongebob, Space Jam, and even 
Nikocado Avocado. With production of Monster Lab nearing a close, Hunter will soon get the break he deserves. Not a week, like an actual month-month break. I think after this, I'm gonna take like a break from the main channel for a while. I want to come back a little more inspired. I wanna come back feeling like I've had time off and I don't resent making stuff for that channel. Um, but we'll see, like I just, if I'm inspired to make something, I'm gonna make it, but I also don't wanna feel like I'm trapped or anything, you know? Visiting him in Flash Kids has taught me a lot about content creation, how to get out of the burnout ruts and even look towards the future in order to make better content today. I know when it's all done and it's all up on YouTube and when it's all out there, out in the open, I think I'm just gonna sit down and I'm just gonna sit with my wife and I'm just gonna watch it from episode one to eight and enjoy it for what it is and just let it exist and just enjoy the fact that turn into, at the end of this, it'll probably be 90 minutes worth of content. I am so proud of that. I gotta chase that high, Uno. We can save the world and I can give myself a pat on the back for every step of the way. With a lot happening since the previous video I made on him, I am glad he's able to move forward and find better ways to express himself. Hunter's expansion and other business ventures is a natural progression of having a successful channel, and sometimes all it takes is the confidence or understanding that your audience wants you to succeed as much as you do. Though he has had thoughts of quitting and the concept of burnout is ever present, that doesn't stop him from creating the type of content that he wants to make be it a second channel, a podcast, or even an original animated series. Also, if you'd like me to review his series Monster Lab, you should comment below. Go well, like, yeah, go do that. And don't worry, when Hell of a Boss releases its final episode, I have a few things to say. But we don't know when that last episode will release, so just wait a bit, I guess, for my thoughts. A special thank you goes out to my patrons. Shout out to them on screen right now. If you want to support my channel, you can join my Patreon, Follow me on Twitter for updates, or join Ellis Marks and I's Discord. And thank you to Pan Pizza for voicing in the video. And a special, special thank you to Hunter, Don, and Trevor for letting me interview them for the video. Until next time, thank you for watching, and please, don't forget to have fun.